No. Are we not allowed to speak? So us. everyone okay. geriatrics <laughs> suck about bowel movements and medications. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna say the problem because I forget I have mine on, but then I've adjusted my computer so that the font is big enough. But then I spin myself at my computer doing this, so I can look through the bifocals. But if I take them off, everything's fine. Sucks. Oh, get old. Right. Eh, beats the alternative oh. though. Yeah, true. So, yeah, absolutely. We're so old. Here it comes. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and an oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of limit champ or lucky track dog league you run, SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and build it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, and tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, oh, sweet lucky enough and Chrissy and Chrissy Chrissy and I give you just the tip for sure you'll giggle a little and even less everyone report to the paddock come helps on. on mute come I was about on. to sneeze so uh, oh, <laughs> oh, not my fault I write I write that's not Jeff's fault congratulations <laughs> this is Chris this is Chrissy I'm the lord of Jankington El Jefe <laughs> And I'm mental. Duke we're of Jackington. At, wasn't it? No, it was right. Earl. 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 You're right. <laughs> we're everyone racers. Welcome to another Z episode. It is episode 280. Nissan first introduced the 240Z, then the 260Z, then the 280Z from 1969 to 1978, but only made them in the U U.S. in uh, 1975. You get the uh, LSL2 L26 2. 0.8 liter engine, three door sports coupe, zap edition in sunshine yellow with black stripes down the center and the sides. Fun fact the car will be forever known as the winner of the 1973 East African Safari Rally. Did you know that? I did not until you'd done that research. And yes. my dad worked for Datsun, which is just cool. Well, that's great. If you're not rolling in your 280Z through the hills of Africa, check out your A1R bingo card. Go ahead, Jeff. Also, fun fact, first car that Jeff is aware of that he was over 100 miles an hour. Oh. Uh -huh. My father borrowed it from a rally friend, and he said, I'm thinking about getting one. Now, he had a Datsun 2000, but that was a two-seater. And he, he said, I'm thinking about getting one of these because it has a little back seat in it. I believe it was a 280, and he put it over 100 miles an hour, and he says, hmm, I think this one works. And then he got a German Ford Fiesta with the 1.9 liter Kent. Same, same thing. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jeff, keep going. What you working on? What am I working on? Work, 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 work. Did you miss me, boys? I missed you. <laughs> um, sorry if you know that one. I, I, I've worked seven days, several 12-hour days. Speaking so. of bingo cards. Yeah. Right? Jeff works a lot. Mm -hmm. Check yeah. it off. Yeah. Does it? I didn't really do anything. I did do some uh, some virtual uh, virtual car work as a coworker who recently bought a Subaru is trying to get rid of the worst car Subaru? on the planet. The Subaru. Subaru. <laughs> yeah. No. Are you sure? Her somehow her and her husband oh. both got talked into a pair of matching Nissan Rogues. Oh. Two of the Subaru. That? And one of them did what they do and lost the transmission. Two and, of them? Yes. And this was during the time when you could not get new cars. So she, I, I would with, she, she was like literally like bumming rides to work and stuff. Oh. And she lives not too far from me. So she uh, put, got her name on the list through a friends and family deal and got a Subaru Ascent, which is like the big three row thing. Looks like a, looks like a, like Forrester meets, yeah, it's kind of big. Um, Forrester with one ten percent on the copier. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly what it is. Um, and basically left the rogue in the front yard since the last six months or so, wow. eight months or so, and now it's like I really should take that thing to Carmax and get rid of it. Does anybody have any jumper cables? So Do I've been you? doing a lot of turn it on again and put the phone near it. What's it doing? 
No, 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 no. You you need like an actual car to like jump start that. Not like the little pat, you know. So I've been doing that for the last couple of days, but I actually haven't touched it. Cuz it happens like at night when I'm home, so. Okay. Wow. Sorry, that's not a real story. I just thought Wait, it was. Did, <laughs> did you did you fix it or did you break it? Because if you no, no, virtually no. broke somebody else's car, I will laugh. I virtually did neither. I was doing lots of <laughs> Tech advice I'm over the laugh phone. Anyway, was, this is like a like a when someone calls, old person calls you and asks to fix their computer. <laughs> it was like, where's the red positive cable? Describe what the battery looks like. Seriously, you didn't have FaceTime. Uh, like, well, it was like dark, so I couldn't really see it. Still, like, yeah, uh, she, okay. she did FaceTime anyway. me at night, and that helped it. But I was like, no, no, it's way dead than that. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be there sooner or later. I'll get that sucker started. Great. That's it. Mental. Mental. You had more fun things going on. Well, my my brother came into town. He brought his uh, new wife. She her name's Gina. She is freaking awesome. Uh, so Vicky had already met her. I was out of town when they visited the first time, and we. He comes to Vegas often, but this time we took him on the locals kind of thing in Vegas. So we had dinner at the Golden Steer, which is where the Rat Pack used to eat. We sat at Mario Andretti's table. It was. Oh. Yeah, Ooh. he's got his own booth there. Uh, and then we took him to you know uh, some of our favorite local hangouts and um, introduced him to Fremont Street. And uh, Saturday we went and saw REO Speedwagon. And yes, they are in their seventies, but uh, they they were, they man they still got it. It was a, it was a really really great concert. Then we went upstairs to the Ghost Bar on the roof of the casino at the uh, Rio. And turns out the band came up there and hung out too. So we hung out with REO Speedwagon and um, Carrot Top showed up. Yeah, you like had me. Bingo at... card. This is a bingo card all, all right there. <laughs> you had me at REO Speedwagon. You lost me at Carrot Top. Uh, my wife was looking at your Facebook. She's like, Mental's mother is still alive? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I think his father is still around too. My my. My stepmom, my mama is, oh, okay. is still alive. No, my mother. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, my dad's still around too. Wow. Um, That's quite a list there. Yeah, we did. Uh, we, we've we been working, you know, so now getting those rooms ready and get everything on there. We are now moving forward with some house stuff. That's great. And then as I posted on our Instagram on Sunday, I was once again with our buddy, John Polnick, the Dur Fascination and the Rami show doing some filming. They're doing a review of JP's new backdate uh 911 which was a lot of fun so i got to drive the chase car which was an amg g wagon squared the am the g squared that they call it it is just 87 feet tall it really I, portal like, axles yeah the, fir <laughs> the first time i went to get out of it because everything inside of it's like a regular g wagon and i like almost twisted my ankle i'm like oh that's right i'm another foot in the air Oh, oh, I know what that thing is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's great. You're it's not short, so there's wagon. that. Yeah. Yeah, and and it, oh god, in 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 a straight line, it's faster than the other one. Uh, anything that anything the size of an F250 should not move that quickly, but damn. Oh, turning. I'm sure it's great around Hold the corners. Yeah. <laughs> turning. This Absolute. Is, this nightmare. is a drag car, not a track well, car. It's it's a it's pendulum, and like yeah. the, the old regular G63, it would take a set. It would roll a little bit, but then it would hold it. But this one like sets and then comes back, and and at that speed, it's kind of terrifying. Or it's, it's it really so high is. up. Yeah. Yes, and then um, it's. I, I it's feel like not they only made that. A, go ahead. I feel like they only made that for um, people in, in the Middle East to basically say, Let's I bought try. the more expensive one that oh. goes through the desert better. I thought you meant drive yes. over people. Yeah. You're both saying correct things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but and, it's the uh, plebs. It's not like, you know, <laughs> insurrection. I mean, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh -huh. uh, yeah, it was. Uh, and then like trying to left foot break it. If you use your left foot and get enough braking pressure, it completely disconnects the, the uh, throttle by wire. Um, also fun to discover in the middle of a corner. Uh, mm. so, uh, it, it, if, if you're in the market for a. Uh, Absolutely insanely G large fast. Vehicle. I, I, I think you'd be happier with the regular. 
<laughs> but it's Good. not as this showy. Is great, you can't say this review. one's twice as expensive. That's the problem. So. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm done name dropping, but I'm not entirely sure. But, uh, that video, <laughs> that video will be coming out, and uh, it's actually worth a lot. The, the day was perfect, and the 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 camera footage. Is it, just... it looked nice. It was it was. Uh, you posted yeah. some good pictures. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chris, you you, uh, you were doing car, something, You were actually right? doing important things. Yes. I yes. worked on other people's cars. I tried and unsuccessfully to uh, wah, wah. clear a leak out of Chrissy's friend Allison's 03 250,000 mile Accord. Um, I cleaned all the sunroof drains out. Turns out it's the, the seal between the sunroof and the body. So that's going to be a harder project. Darn. But we tried the easy thing first just to see if And that was she work. and I got to sit in the kitchen and chat. So that was good. Yeah. Too. While I gave it a vacuum and a rain axe and all the things that happen when nice the car comes for service. Uh, and then Chrissy's sister <laughs> car came over with, with Chrissy's sister's husband and I guided him on replacing uh, valve cover, gasket, spark plugs, coil, and serpentine belts on the Cyan XB. Had a weird failure though. It had a cylinder three misfire. We swapped coils, didn't change it. So we said, okay, we're gonna have to replace some things but it was all a result of the valve cover gasket leak that was getting down into the cylinder wells and other places. Uh, turns out the electrode on one of the spark plugs had broken. So when we got the plug out, like the, the uh -huh. bit in the end, that <laughs> that's you your problem right to, there. Uh -huh. I just, I could just pull it out. Uh huh. So that that's that. I've seen that. Yeah. The electrode that goes from where the coil attaches to the sparky bit at the end had broken in the middle. This feels... So, were you able to get it all out of there? Because if that yeah. starts, oh yeah, it, it wasn't it okay. wasn't the porcelain, it wasn't that, and it didn't drop out because it it had you know the 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 little the hook on the end of a spark plug caught the bit there, so it didn't get any further. And I mean, it was an NGK plug that probably had eighty thousand miles on it, so it's a baby. Yeah, right? <laughs> sure. Um, so I did all that that other people's car stuff, and in other news, I flew a plane. <gasps> da -da -da! Da -da -da! Yep. Finally saw the plane that some others and I have purchased quite a long time saying, ago. But most importantly, was it your plane? Yes. Okay, yes. Good. Yes. yes. Flew our plane. So well, I actually have an instructor now and I have actually seen and flown the plane and I have a booked for the next time and I'm pushing forward with plane stuff, but it's fun to have actually flown our plane. Uh, and just so people at home are playing 142? Cessna 150. 150. Okay. Yep. Very good. Yep. It is the 1998 Toyota Corolla of airplanes, basically. I was going to say it's the Miata because it's always. No, the it's answer. not. It's not a sporty. Not sporty. Yeah. Uh -uh. It's not sporty. It's it's going to get you where you need to go. They made a billion of them. Easy to work on. Easy to do everything. Great parts availability. Yeah. Cockpit's pretty small, though. Yeah. Oh, it's tiny. Yep. I had to find right. an instructor that was smaller than me to make sure we could actually take off with more than a couple gallons of gas. <laughs> truth like yep. legit yeah yep. we had to turn people down anyway uh while chris was doing that i was doing more housework i've moved on to a different room in the house uh our if when you walk in the door if you ever did walk in the door there is a very large bookshelf to your right and uh i started cleaning that off so looking did a lot of stuff to give away and move stuff around because it's just one of those catch-alls so so a little bit more to do but working on it so that's what i've been doing why don't you just roll us right I into will. news and notes time? Sure. General Motors is leaning uh, into electrification like most OEMs, but don't fret inter internal combustion loyalist. Peter Holdreth at The Drive gives us news about the next and possibly the last generation of the vulnerable uh, small block V8. In a press release this week, the general confirmed a 854 million investment into the facilities that will make the sixth generation small block v8 start starting the engine will stating excuse me stating the engine will power uh their line of full-size pickups and suvs the new this news comes after gm has started a transition to electric electric only by 2035 the small block chevy dates back to 1954 modern versions have the same bore spacing and a few other features with uh, the original the fourth gen arrived in 2005 the current fifth gen version was first in 2014 corvette c7 news are the link in our show notes uh don't forget these will also be 
in junkyards almost immediately from people crashing them and several years later become the favorite for swappers into all kinds of crazy silly vehicles because yep. gm we hope yep I, well i say f dealer markup and flippers and i'm sure you'll join me uh joel stockdale recently reported in auto blog that two high profile cars uh for markup and speculators just hit all-time lows on dare i say third tier auction site cars and bits is that fair third tier he moves a lot of cars he does he, move a lot doug gets, demuro's featured a lot on our buddies over at the bid nerds I don't yeah know doug, doug demuro's here. running a good site but i wouldn't say it's the highest I, i'm not gonna say anything bad about the website i want to say that his cars are not the most prestigious cars it's fun enthusiast cars cool cars and bits but anyway uh, but anyway, so Doug DeMiro said it was happening, and now his website proved it, that the bubble is bursting. A Corolla GR on a no-reserve auction gaveled at 48550 which is about 8500 above MSRP. And the seller admitted that it was a substantial loss and lower, that ju- lower than just about all the dealers currently have it on their showroom for- floor. Uh, the other was a Civic Type R, mm. which y'all remember that, mm. right? It gaveled, or I should say it ended at $49,000, which is only about 5 k over the sticker. The sticker in the ad showed a dealer markup of more than $20,000. I'm the throwing final, up right now. Yeah. The final price was sixty-seven six seventy-eight ninety-five dollars on the sticker. Of course, the person who was selling it on cars and bids did not sell because it had a reserve, and he won't say what they actually paid for it because he's still trying to sell it. But something tells me it's a lot closer to sixty-seven thousand dollars than forty-nine thousand dollars. So, dealers and flippers out there, screw you! If you speculated and you just paid a lot of money for that Corolla GR, I hope you like it. Well, I, I, I don't understand how you thought you were going to out dealership a dealership. <laughs> now, you, you're thing. not wrong, but there yeah. are lots of people who get in line for that next Corvette and immediately flip it to somebody who just didn't get in line as fast as you. This kind of thing is all about how well you bought it. And it doesn't sound like these guys bought it well enough to try to do this. So. Oh, well. Nope. So Ferraris, talk about cars that are frequently paid flipped. too much <laughs> yeah. for and flipped. Yep. Uh, they're also defined by several other features, one of which is the sound. But mm-hmm. in an era of electric and hybrids, well, how is that going to work? So Owen Bellawood at Jalopnik tells us that the House of the Prancing Horse is doing something about it. Rather than a synthetic speaker like we saw at SEMA, they still want an honest noise coming their first all-electric supercar, the SF90 due for release in 25. According to a recent patent application, Ferrari is looking to amplify the sounds made by the electric motors powering the car. From Bloomberg, quote, the patent covers a reproduction device for the realization of a sound that can be associated with an electric motor. That's definitely translated from Italian. Uh, Ferrari has declined (laughs) to comment, but if it's put into production, it would allow Ferrari to amplify the sound from one or more of the EV's onboard motors. This would then be routed through the rear of the car to let that wail be heard by everyone within a few miles. Okay. What well, okay. what are you foreseeing? Like a little a, a, a like microphone <laughs> next to it that goes to an amplifier or like a jack shaft to like one of those old like air raid sirens like yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's gotta be a speaker. Yeah. It's easier to run two wires and put a speaker wherever you want than have to yeah, that's true. Do the rest. I, I, I would not be surprised though to see Ferrari actually design something that just makes a racket that could be designed quietly. That, well, that's what I'm thinking. It you would could, it would be a so oh, yeah. like you know effectively the mechanical version of putting a baseball card in your bicycle spokes. Well, that yeah, that's what totally. I was thinking. Like some sort of fins that would make a sound Word. and also cool the motor. I don't know. It's Ferrari. They just might like unbalance it and let it like shake a lot or something. I don't know. <laughs> no problem with that plan. 
All anyway, right. we're going to be talking about how to make cars more fun. And maybe you're down with this, but you don't have a fun car just yet. But my awesome co-host scoured our friends at Racing Junk, and they came up with this legitimately awesome track ready Miata NA. It is only $4,200. This thing is really, really cool. They did the uh, NB brake upgrade. They've got a fitted fiberglass driver's seat, a god awful Kirky passenger seat, but that's not your problem. That's uh, for your passenger to go in there. They've got a JDM 1.8 liter in there. So no nose wobbling 1.6. The five speed, they've had the flywheel lightened. It's got a hard top, which is worth two grand alone. Real, or if you're trying to find a good one, the adjustable conies, it's got eye box, a lower strut brace, flying Miata sway bars, a hard dog roll bar, fiber, the whole nine yards is on 15 inch wheels with 200 treadwear falcons and comes with another set of wheels and road tires so you can drive it to the track. It the seller admits it's got a couple of dings on it from some low speed people backing into it kind of a deal, but it comes with a title and it's track ready, not race ready, but track ready. You throw a $1,200 weld it yourself cage in there and you are ready to go racing. This is a fantastic deal. I love this thing. I, go, yeah. go back to the picture real quick. Yeah. And, and it's, know. it's, it's pretty straight. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's got yeah. some bolted on fender flary things, which probably right now it's got yeah, wide wheels and space. Perfect for an HPDE or time trial kind of fun, just fun, good, cheap fun right there. Yeah. I feel, totally. I feel like it's done a lap at, um, uh, sh crap. What's that track? I just lost it. Um, CMP. Carolina, Motor CMP, Sports. CMP. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yep. It's in Camden, it's, it's South right Carolina. It's in Camden, South Carolina. It's in yeah. Camden. It's probably done several laps there. Yeah. Yep. And these, even the NAs are still abundantly in junkyards. At least they are around here. So you can get all the cool stuff for it. This is a great deal. I, I am geeked about this. Yeah. Wood purchase, wood hoon would have a good time. Totally. Absolutely. And not too all far right. away. Don't have money. Yeah. Good. And so if you're looking for a don't fun way it. to get it, yeah, Just get a saying. cheap car, you don't need a G Wagon squared. That's you just true. need a fun, hurling, thrown around fun car. They're like the same money fun. though. So it's yeah. like I mean, really we've all spent really more on stupider stuff than that Miata. So. <laughs> totally. Oh, and we've spent more on super Miatas. Uh, and this is the great thing about racing junk because it's always free to browse, always free to place an ad. But if you want to get like all those great ads, you're trying to unload some stuff to make money for a Miata, check out racingjunk.com. Yeah, if you're classified of the everyone racers. I was gonna say, yeah, if you're trying to flip your GR Corolla, you're gonna need more than one picture. So just pay also, the 19 bucks. Don't flip your GR Corolla. You're right. Not on right. yeah, don't, don't, don't. Right? In any way of anyway, that way i was thinking of the flipping this way that's what i was thinking like yeah. let's not flip it that way oh, God, uh, okay so we don't really have any upcoming races but uh we had uh rally master jeff Stobbs on last week and next monday starts the retreat from moscow rally which is starts right up there in uh in garage heroes land and drives down to alabama does it end in alabama where's it end yes at yeah, harbor harbor okay I just um, read the copy I'm, I'm vamping can i say 19 uh vehicles will leave from up there in the snowy wilds of pa and finish in alabama nine big american cars five japanese imports a lexus a beamer a mercedes a french car peugeot 505 follow along on instagram with the hashtag lemons rally one word we posted the list here for all of the uh, podcasters to uh, comment on. Anybody see anything fun? I have to point out that you wrote that you're the slightly warmer climate of Alabama. I'm pretty sure <laughs> Barber has been some of the coldest races of my whole entire life. So uh, there's that. And I live Atlanta has been the coldest races I've ever attended. And that's... Yeah supposed to be hot in here they're, yeah they're two hours from each other well yep. yeah it's right. uh it, it's i i don't i like the the uh jeff i don't know if you saw the 81 lincoln mark six yeah the peugeot has me intrigued uh Very. and also i the mean the suit i was the samurai i was just gonna say a, this it's a long drive in a 60 horsepower tractor it's gonna be a long day <laughs> that may or may long not time. turn over depending on yes uh, what you do with it mm -hmm. i when I've I met kind of my wife. I had a Suzuki Samurai. I I would I would have a Samurai in my fleet if I could, 
But the one that interests me the most is the Jeep Comanche. I love that little pickup. I think getting parts for a Peugeot is probably not. Oh, totally. <laughs> I guess that's part of the fun, though. But yep. I feel like if you've already committed, you know, to having a Peugeot, you 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 knew that. You Let's knew that hope when you so. Started. Yeah, sure. So hopefully, get some points. Be interesting to see. Uh, check it out. Keep watching. They do such a great job of posting photos. So. I'm sure we'll see some really good ones. I'm wondering which one doesn't have a roof. I mean, besides the obvious ones, but you know, I'm sure the there's samurai some... better be a convertible. I'm, but I'm sure there's samurais. other ones. That's that... like, ugh, don't bother. Ugh. Holy listener feedback time. So even though I'm not driving the Mercedes, somehow it picked up a nail in the tire yeah. again. I, I was going to ask this. I mean, how many flats do you get when it's just sitting there ah uh, i i guess it was in there and just got pushed all the way in so i drove it up to my tire shop and literally the guy comes out and he goes uh this this is for other car yeah 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 because <laughs> well, you, you, what you you buried <laughs> the lead there. you drove it in the passenger seat of your miata yes so i took it up there the passenger seat the miata and i posted something snarky on instagram about how losers have to lecture their tires in the uh, penalty box and i just like mine so much i take them out for a drive when it's nice <laughs> yep it's about right uh, dc doug posted the sorry for party racing don't wheel me bro shirt in response which i, nice. I still don't have one still don't have one why gotta get me one Tam. Uh, what Tam, um, i have i have other i also have other premium shirts uh that nobody else has so i guess i should it's okay tim uh michael k asked if you were switching over to your snow tires <laughs> funny, funny joke. right uh, uh i understand right? both of those words uh, yeah. yes uh we also got some comments on the flag behind jeff jeff Stobbs' head in the last episode uh, this was the hot dog on the Segway, correct? <laughs> correct. <Yes. laughs> Don't step on your wiener shirt. Uh, and Steph the Pef uh, simply observed in her most eloquent way, dong. TDI Soar Racing said that flag of nice. was hilarious. And of course, the entire show on YouTube has some comments as well. Uh, Michael K liked our TR7 of the Mary F. Kill rally cars ending. My teammate did a lemon rally in a TR7. Tim B commented about the spec Prius discussion and said spec smart car. He also mentioned he is, quote, looking forward to doing a rally probably in 2024 in his 59 L Camino once it's running under its own power, of course. A 59 El Camino. That's like the Falcon base. No, no, not Falcon. What's a, what is it? That's a, it's the Impala base. It's Impala, Impala base. Yeah. based. The, okay. The, yeah. The, bat, the, the bat yeah. The, the bat wings. Yeah. That was the first year, if I'm not mistaken. Mm, yeah. Yes. And it is a beautiful car. Well, Tim, go for that. That sounds wonderful. Have a good time. <laughs> you, you know who? El okay. Camino. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she had a Cutlass Sierra, though. That's pretty much the yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, that'd be Chrissy's mom. Could, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did Chrissy's no. mom have an El Camino? No, oh. Cutlass Sierra. <laughs> what what was the quest? <laughs> I was gonna say, five. what was the craziest like car that your mother drove? She. What was before they had the Datsun? She had a an Aspen. They had what kind Aspen. of yes. what kind of Datsun did she? She had an Aspen. 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 My dad had a two ten. That is how, that's how, that's how I don't know. But good. There's an Aspen, good there's cars. an Aspen on the, uh, the lemons rally. Yeah. There, but there's also, um, our friends, uh, from my coworker who we battled in class B, I'm pretty sure. Didn't she say that's it was an yellow? Aspen? Her, yeah, yeah, she had I, a no, 78 no, no. two door yellow Aspen. Oh, so I showed them pictures. That's what I, now I remember. I yes, yeah. I showed them pictures. No, and, of, yeah. It's Dan's. yellow now. That's awesome. It, it, yes theirs is yellow hers was yellow yes oh, anyway, she cool. said it's just like that anyway so if you want to battle for the lead of your class at a lemons race or any other race for that matter <laughs> paint your car the same color as anything chrissy's mom owned gray gray, just gray. It's all gray. <laughs> gray. oh the quest was a little on the purpley it side it was kind of gray bluish yep. gray yeah yeah yep. Yep. anyway it's been time. now that chopped pretty heavy it's main topic yeah. time, everybody. 
No? Um, somebody who who brought this to our attention. You should, you Chris. should introduce this. I did. Yeah. Right. Well, I saw this and and GRM posted this up and we keep stealing ideas from GRM, but we're going to use this as a jumping off point. It's winter, it. everybody. We can yeah. steal <laughs> eyes from somewhere. And uh, this is at this time it was David Wallens. And the idea I thought was great is how to make playing with cars more fun because that's why we do this. And I think we forget about that sometimes. But this is supposed to be fun. None, no one listening to the show, no one on the show is making a living doing this. Nope, mm -hmm. not in any way, shape, or form. So if it's not fun, why are you doing it? Uh, so, this. Everybody else does it. Right, but the, make it fun. Find your way to make it fun. So we're going to talk about ways that- Is drinking on this set, list? Damn it, it's not. No, but it should be, but it can be. <laughs> why, why didn't you add it? it I was, just yeah. thought of it. <laughs> we have, we've added our own here. And and so, anyway, we're going to talk about some of the ones that they said. We're also, we're going to add our own and we're not going to go through all of them. You can read the article, link, link in our show notes, or just go to GRM and find it. Um, so let's get started. How do you keep wrenching fun? Go ahead, right, you go you because start you, you up? me starts up. Yeah, All right. well, your well, well, your first one. I'll, I'll give a couple of thoughts on this, and then some other people can take over on the wrenching fun. The one that GRM said it says, "Let there be light." Oh Working my gosh! In a poorly lit shop is terrible, 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 terrible. The only way to go is more light than you think is reasonable, and that's about right. You really can't have enough work light in a shop, and like we put in a whole all... bunch. We've all done it. We've all gotten our, you know, we borrowed a garage, we rented a garage, we had our first garage, and it's got that 125 watt light bulb, and you don't even think about it. And now the last four houses I've moved into before I even start wrenching while everything's outside of the garage, more lights, more lights, yeah. and and LED strip lights, not the the cool decorative kind, but just actual shop lights. They plug into each other. They mount with two friggin' drywall screws yeah. and they are so cheap at Harbor Freight or Barina, on Amazon. Barina LED lights. It's, yeah. it's the sun is what it so is. We have in, so we have in the basement is the it's Barina the ones. Sun. We put the, it hurts we, your we put eyes. The, we put the T8 fluorescents in the garage before LEDs were common enough, but they are still super bright and haven't burned out. So I can't really replace them yet. But we have pictures of us legit making our first roll cage with, I think, I think I guess we had the light that comes with the garage, but we also were doing the, the using single a single bulb. Yeah, no, but it we was were, the, the, the garage door the garage, the garage. No, no, no the, the garage door openers. They have oh. two bulbs in each side, and we put brighter, bulbs we're, bigger those, bulbs. That's what we were using. That they, enough that they melted the covers. <laughs> still like that, right? Still they now, still yeah. and, and one of them, one of them, the, the lights just don't even work anymore. Yeah. So yeah. So no I I That's agree good. to all of this. Um, here's a safety tip that I'm sure all of my electrician and electric engineer friends will tell me that I'm crazy for doing, but I bought those cheap linkable, sh like led shop lighting what things. Metal just talked about. No, no, no. I know that I have like nine of them in my garage that all link to each other and then go to a power strip, like where I can reach it. And it's just plugged you into the wall. The safety oh, professional cool. having an aneurysm right now, right? Are you kidding me? No, you you can make them. They're pluggable. so low voltage. Yeah, pluggable is okay. Not great. Oh, now daisy chain to each daisy, other. No, that's but they're that's designed. How they're designed. The lights, okay. the lights will daisy. All of yeah, them. They're designed. Yeah, they, yeah. They're actually fact, designed. It to do says that. I think it says limit of nine. And it's the I'm, end of the power strip. I'm at the limit. Exactly. <laughs> no way, Jeff. You're at the limit. Uh, all right. Because he's going to see all of his junk because he's not going to be working in the garage. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right. All right. The next two are ones that I'm adding. These are not original ones. One of them is good and or specialty tools by happiness. And I'll use an example of adjusting the valves on a Honda. There is a special tool that you get that makes this a incredibly easy job. And without that, you're taking a long time to work the rent, do the thing, and it takes forever. But once you have the right tool, it it's just, bam, you're done. It's fast and easy. So I think don't skimp when it comes to specialty tools for the right things and good quality tools as opposed to that adjustable wrench and pliers that you got at the gas station that once. 
during a lemons rally. I'm just going to add to that real quick because I wrote my answers down the bottom and I didn't uh, add them to this. Um, wired versus uh, not wired. I, I mean, nobody uses wired uh, tools wired anymore, what? but I tools. Oh, okay. Corded tools with Corded cords. Tools. Corded tools, yes. Or okay. lights with cords or most things with cords. Uh, I just am thinking back to the times when we used to use things with head cords and, uh, and that was just annoying and you have to, to plug it in and that's dumb. So I think get good tools as is what I'm agreeing with you that I think there's value to you're going to be working with them. It, make yeah, it work. Good tools. Like they don't slip off the bolts. The pliers actually like ply, you know, ever the ratchets don't take a really long time to connect to the next click so mm -hmm. that you're mm -hmm. like, when you're doing that really tight space, arc, you can't work arc on spacing. it. Right. Yep. Yeah. No, no one has taught me more about arc spacing than uh, Project Farm. When he tests a ratchet, he does some great, like, this one goes every seven, every seven degrees it clicks. Yeah. It, that makes wrenching so much easier. Mm -hmm. Love um, it. 90-tooth gear wrench was, like, the greatest thing I ever bought. Yeah. I got two more. One of them I didn't write down yet, but I'm going to add now. It sucks to work on things that are really dirty. So take a minute. You live by this. And clean it off. Like pressure wash the thing you're going to work on. Or just wipe it off, clean it off. Because otherwise you immediately end up a slime monster. Because once it's on your hands and you touch everything else, now everything's dirty. And now you've just spread it everywhere. So if you take a few moments just to have a cleaner workspace, a cleaner project, cleaner everything, it makes all of that wrenching so much happier. You're not wrong, although I never do it. I I'm always a gritty kitty. Here's yes. looking at Jeff. Your yep. brother is just as bad, sometimes yep. worse. Yeah. You got it. There's a reason one wall of my garage is covered in greasy handprints. It's me. It was from. No, it was from Jim. No, it wasn't. Both of you getting up out of the ground after doing. Yeah. Covered in greasy handprints. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry. And last. I'll bring some okay. white paint next time. That's no. fine. No, the, the garage. We need to do a lot Memories. of work before you can get, get to white paint. Right. Uh, last thing I've got on wrenching is keep the clutter under control to facilitate the working. If there's so much clutter, you can't do anything. You can't find your tools. You can't see, you can't do anything. It's miserable working when you can't move. Do it, throw stuff out. Like, yes, you, you might need that hose some project 20 years from now, or you can just go buy another one for $4, you know, get rid of the stuff so that you can use your space and can move in your space mental and this is a trait i find so much among endurance racers is we have this wonderful and positive outlook where we see potential in everything and and oh this orphaned piece of metal might have a purpose someday in the future but when the first 30% and last 30% of your project time involves moving things to get to this thing. It stops being fun. And I've, I, I preach this and I still have to learn this lesson every five years. And I'm in a purge cycle right now because I'm just, I'm tired of having to move things to get to things. Put it up on the, uh, one of the Facebook groups. Does anybody need this thing? I can bring it to the next race. Otherwise, boom big trash day it's gone or take it to the metal recyclers and buy yourself some beer money because we all forgot to put drinking if you're not in recovery or don't drink for that kind of thing and and even if you are you know you can bribe other people or buy cokes or whatever your favorite drink is on those right there yeah that's all from me on wrenching someone else take over the wrenching top ha hashtag targeted uh, the last couple of comments i'm joking uh <laughs> Uh, I, I want to talk something you're about the wrong. old. I know. No, <laughs> nope, you're not. Let's talk about the oldest, dirtiest, grungiest guy that you're going to know and you're going to love. He's your local machine shop guy. Machine shops are a dying, losing, lost art. This is from the article. I've, machine, you know, know your machine shop is from the article. It's my comments. Um, finding a good one and knowing a good one and 
keeping it afloat in your local neighborhood is so important. Um, we're, we're in a disposable society. And if you can get someone to turn those brake discs or hone your block or whatever, it's worth their weight in gold. Know thy local machine shop. I would argue also they, they, chances are they've raced. I haven't, I haven't never met a machine shop or, or flown least, or whatever. Yeah. Who didn't it, compete in something and they can usually, you know, Hey, could you hone this out? What are you doing with it? Well, we're building an endurance racing car. Oh, well, you know that this block is prone to this failure, blah, blah, blah. Here's a workaround. You know, they're, they, they, they have wisdom. Absolutely. They are sages in the way a, a motor can work. So talk to them. Yeah. I also think that um, it, this is one of those things where it's your money, your pay, your um, checkbook is better than time sometimes, oh, depending on yeah. what you're doing. I know we've used a, a local machine shop that I'm not sure what they, if they race, but they took our, the head to the Honda, I think a couple times to fix it. And it's just one of those things where it's easier to just give somebody else that knows what they're doing. Oh, they totally build racing engines. The guy that, or that does the engine machine shop used to work for Penske building their like, huh. Got indie it. stuff Got it. yep since you live in penske land it's not a surprise yep. true yep uh here's the next one i'm gonna say uh and it says if all else fails read the directions and i'm gonna take that a little different direction than the article um i'm gonna say that the value of what you can learn by reading or watching a YouTube channel or doing this or doing that is, is really valid way to learn to be a wrench and just getting out there and working a little bit past your comfort zone all the time, but getting yourself re-comfortable by reading and reading and reading, like seriously, like knowing torque specs and, you know, reading the pro the, step-by-step -step process on how to do something is very valuable even if you've been around the block a bunch of times because who knows when you're working with that new motor where the transducer wheel is that runs you know like so follow the directions watch a youtube learn before you d dive in you love youtube i do it it is an excellent am... way to, to to learn things on there oh but i this agree is, yeah um and I'm going to tie these, these the two things together because Chris talked about specialty tools and YouTube and certain specialty tools are absurdly expensive. Uh, Mercedes owner. Um, there was also when I was doing work on a Volvo, it was a $150 specialty tool to lock the cams in place. If you were doing any work under the valve cover gasket. And I went on YouTube and I found any number of YouTube videos that were like, Oh, we're going to teach you how to do this. Here's how to build without it. this without the specialty tool. And every one of them involved wedge screwdriver. And I'm like, Nope. And it, in that case, if they start saying things like wedge this, weld this, beat this with hammer, just buy the specialty tool uh, on that one. You know, if they're saying, hey, and a lot of times you can resell these things in specialty communities on social media, but I'm going to jump can. into my thing on this. On some yeah. of that though, like the, yeah. for Mazda motors, the MZRs, there's a specialty tool to lock the cams in place. You know, it works or, just as well. Or a drill bit. No, a piece of flat stock that's about one eighth inch you could jam into the side not jam totally but there's a slot and it works exactly on the side of the cams there and holds them perfectly for example or if you you know need something you know make some tools sometimes it's so much better to make tools and be frustrated like example the flywheel on our outboard motor it's outboard motors on top stators involved in there and it's not coming off with anything i can figure out so i took some quarter inch plate and welded some other quarter inch plate to it and drilled a big hole in it and attached that to a puller and that pulled that thing right off after i struggled with it for at least an hour it took me half an hour to make the tool after i'd struggled with it for half an hour for an hour doing it the wrong way yeah so uh chris talked about yeah clean stuff off because it is depressing and annoying and frustrating to work on filthy things and everything becomes filthy because you're you're spreading it out there this is uh, jeff should feel targeted no <laughs> not okay okay that's no but problem he's okay with it at yeah. the end of the day as chris pointed out in the very beginning of this segment none of us are getting paid to do this this is supposed to be fun so really if you think about it we're just live action role playing we are 
pretending to be race car drivers while we're racing cars. And if you're going to do that, look the part. Clean the car up. If you've got a cool theme, go with that cool theme. But why not have a cool looking car? Why not have a wild looking car? Uh, we we highlighted on some of our listener feedback. Someone actually spent money on the good looking good looking suit from Race Image. Look good. Yeah, right? get that hero shot with that good helmet under your arm. I'm just gonna say that. And I didn't take this. None of us took this. But I'm gonna real quick just do this last little bit because we're talking about always. Be aware of fire. And as I uh, talked about last week, when I went to go do uh, a show with our friends, Rami, all right, this is something that we weren't even trying. This was in his garage. The 930 caught fire. It's it, Fire doesn't let you know when it's coming. Things just catch fire. Have extinguishers everywhere. That's kind of a uh, 930 thing, though, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, just yeah. so no just news. so DJ914 isn't crying while he's watching the show, was the 930 okay? Yes. Okay, good. Small fire. <laughs> small fire. No problem. 930 there. wise, it was very small. Uh, if you if you watch any of Rami's stuff, you do see his G Wagon, his first G Wagon, burn to the ground. Oh. That's not okay then. Mm-mm. That's why I got the two X one. It's apparently not. Oh no, that was two G wagons. Four X one. But yes, uh, but it, it, again, fire. Always expect the fire. It's always have a have an extinguisher. Good idea. Uh, All right. I feel like we should move on to the next section. Okay. Oh no, Chrissy still got to go. Did Chrissy you? Yeah, so. Oh, I'm I just so have sorry. One. So sorry. So sorry. PPE is very important. Uh, this is pr- from from the article. Watch your eyes. Uh, safety glasses are a must. Uh, and and good gloves. There's plenty of times where you feel like the dexterity you may, may not be able to do it. Then um, put nitrile on or put find the pair of gloves that fit you well that are doing a good job. Same with safety glasses. Uh, stop people's work if you see them not wearing safety glasses. I have I do that, but that's also my job. So um, I just hate to have something go into somebody's eye because I don't want to take them to the hospital. That's really what it comes down to. So I don't want them to be hurt. I don't want to deal with it. So um, make sure you wear the PPE. Because Chrissy always wears safety glasses. She's never had the joy of a piece of rust caught in your eye and under your eyelids scratching every time you blink. Sure. There wasn't a hospital trip. It was just, that's like a horrible form of torture. All right, Jeff. So my optometrist, we mentioned that I was old and got glasses, et cetera. Uh, he looked into my eyes and he was like, eh, let me see what you do here. I see you do car racing on your thing. And he said, uh, uh, do you do a lot of wrenching? Do you do a lot of this? I'm like, yeah, all the time. Rust, rusty cars, bad cars. I'm like, yeah, yeah. He goes, do you wear your, do you wear safety glasses like all the time? And I was like, all the time. <laughs> all the all time. The time. And he's like, well, I guess I can skip that speech since you Although, seem to be undamaged. Except and then for he that looked t- in my eyes. Except and for he that said, time. Right, let me finish this Go and ahead. then you can say it. He looked into my eyes and he says, Do you not wear sunglasses a lot? And I said, I wear sunglasses all the time. He's like, I'm seeing some damage here. <gasps> Chrissy, oh, would I, you like to say? I know what <laughs> That's literally what I was going to say, except for those couple of times where you welded without a freaking gla- gla- what? Yeah, Or the, your sunglasses Holy... are $3. Because like, you step I got on a them, box all of them on the Wish. time. I, I wear them all the time. You wish yeah, but they're that they shitty. were protecting your eyes. <laughs> that time that you welded a couple times and you held, you blinked squint, and you held your squint. hand. No! <laughs> oh, there, was, there, was, there was tinted glass. It's but never killing mind. Me. there wasn't squeeze. the time that you were right that is not a thing it is a thing and you shouldn't do it anyway we're gonna move on move he on. lectured me go on driving right. let's talk about driving things to make driving fun oh, okay let's just i'm, I'm just... gonna jump in go i'm going first drive it whatever it is you have you can run just about anything was the title of it um fast car or slow car fast you can have fun on douglas extra track talk to 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 randy bish and his whatever boat class auto crossing that he's doing don't ever let your machine not be right just run it do whatever you can do yeah 
No, okay. A, a bad car is still better than not being there. Yep. I'll go for one more and I'll finish this and then I'll jump out and you guys can talk. Um, protect your neck. And I know Chrissy wants to say something on this one, but just like eye protection, wear it all the time. Neck protection all the time. There's no reason to die for our sport. I feel like uh, you can't really go out on track without having neck protection. I'm pretty sure it's one of those things that they check. Um, but Not don't a even... lot of HPDs. Sure. Yeah, correct. Right. So that's, yeah. um, but what my comment was, you remember when we used to use neck, neck rings and we thought that that was okay? Yeah, no, no, we all did. Like we legit did that. And I was, I'm just thinking about when we're talking about protecting your neck. And, and there were the people article. that were whining about that. Ah, this you can't turn my head i'm gonna burn in the fire without it Ah. amazing to think how far we've come so i i will be from nothing to neck rings to hans and and defenders and that kind of stuff so uh pretty pretty amazing to think where we thought everything was sufficient but yes i agree protect your neck totally all right i got a few one from the article was look ahead now we have talked about this one plenty like every show. I will show. never <laughs> stop saying this. It's amazing what happens when you just look up. <laughs> Who knew? Look down the track, look ahead, whatever it is. It it will change your world once you realize it. And then you're still going to struggle with it pretty much forever. Yeah. We all do. That's a euphemism okay. for life, though, man. Yeah. Anticipate. Uh, so yeah. says the, the one who thinks deep here. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> philosophy degree hey right uh, that's what's happening <laughs> um yeah now two i'm gonna lump together one they said run good tires and spring for good shocks too i was gonna go on the shocks one does everyone here remember the first time they actually put a new set of conies on a car and what it did to that car i know i do mental does chrissy does like <laughs> I've never, I don't think I've ever really used Coney's. I've been a uh, fan of some of the other you brands. Put, you put the so. FSDs on your yeah, 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 gray no. three. Oh, that's right. I did do the FSDs. Yeah. I did like the FSDs. Yeah. And I think probably only because they were my car. Well, yeah, no, no. No, because we had good experience with them and you knew they were good and they would fit. No, no, because you They're... couldn't get my favorite brands because I've used some other brands. But yeah. Coney's are well, still, great. I when you them. put good quality yeah, shocks, <clears throat> Coney's, the right Bill Steens, mm-hmm. Olden's, you know, anything like that, you put that on the car and it's amazing how much better it is versus Gabriel's or Tokiko freaking blues that are like the worst shocks in the world. They, they somehow managed to have a terrible ride and poor body control for, I don't know how they do it. I had Tokiko um, whites. They were all right. They, they were all right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't like them is, so much. They were just what was available. Yeah. Good shocks just make such a difference. Yeah. So, do that now don't let and the I've keeper got, off the track but just spend the money when it comes time yeah. to upgrade when yeah when you're when buying it comes shocks, time, yeah oh buy, yeah just, buy the, and you don't have to get the you know 1500 piece motons or something like that but just you know get something coney ish you know it's a good quality and they've got a great warranty too yes yes they do i sure do all right uh these i've got two here that i'm adding to this driving part one of them is a little bit of mechanical sympathy goes a long way to maintain happiness. It doesn't take much, just a tiny bit of mechanical sympathy keeps you from breaking your car. And there's very, very, very rarely an occasion where someone with a broken car is happy. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Just that little tiny bit, like a half second slower when you shift. You know, or do you really need to run over that curb that hard? Is 500 RPM really going to win you this? It Things might. like that. Oh, it, and every time it, it does. Right. And every time it does, you agree to and tell the car, I'm very sorry yeah. we're doing this. We'll fix you later. So, sometimes it does, but quite often it doesn't. But little things like that, just those tiny bits of mechanical sympathy keep your car from getting broken. And if you're not fixing a broken car, you're definitely happier. I would, I would totally. argue the, the, the attitude of just having the mechanical sympathy, being deliberate, but not violent with your inputs and your movements 
I, I, I will, I will argue that it, you will be faster. Mm -hmm. Agree. Yeah, totally Def. agree. I, I'm going to say it, your tires won't grease. Your brakes won't overheat. You won't pop line. Like it, there's, there's immediate benefits, not just longevity benefits. You probably won't crash as much either. Yeah. Cause you're all of a sudden smooth. If you look up and have mechanical sympathy, all of a sudden you're going to be going pretty quick and nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Last one I've got. This is another one I, I came up with is care a little less and remember the big picture with realistic goals. It's too easy to get caught up in, I must win this thing, or, you know, I will only. I must be the winner or right. I'm not playing. Or I'm only eighth instead of 12. Like, like we said before, none of us are making a living doing this. Have fun. Does it really matter if you're eighth or 12th? No, not really. Have your realistic goals. If your realistic goal is, I really think I can win this and we're going to do it because we've, we've done pretty well. Okay, cool. That's a realistic goal. But if it's your, like your third time out and you've only come in 40th and you're super pissed that you now you're not winning. No, you're not having fun. You need to reevaluate my friend. Yes. All right. I think it's up to me. All right. Um, the one in there, this was from the article. I love this one. It said, thanks workers. Now there are any number of stickers on cars that say, thanks quarter workers. And you really should be waving at them, uh, during you know, the cool down lap, the checkered flag, but, and that was what the, they talked about in the article, but I'm going to take it one step further. This is not just lip service to the, thank you for your service. Corner worker, talk to corner workers. Talk about dying arts and dying breeds. Good corner workers. They don't even, it's like there's only one place in the country uh, that they train them anymore. It's at Lake Erie. And you find someone, oh, I've been working this race since blah, 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 1970 something. They can get a little okay boomerish, but they've got great stories. And if you're just, you want to dabble in this, catch Dale or Ken at a lemons race. And Heck, you don't even have to ask them a question. They are usually in the middle of a great story as you walk up to them because they have done everything and they've seen everything. It's awesome. New Hampshire, they actually have to sign up to work the lemons race like months in advance. And if they're not like the track's favorite people, they don't get to work the lemons race. And they like it because they come hang out. The, they were, they were, you know, oh, always. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. They're hurling dongs and drinking beers and jumping in the hot tubs. It's fantastic. The, uh, I got to meet a lot of the corner workers at high plains raceway and the track owner. And these are, they're just great people with a great attitude and a lot of cool, fun stories. And they're fun to listen to. And they, they genuinely appreciate it here. Have a Coke. Hey, here, have a cup of coffee. Have you had lunch yet? The, you know, these people are giving up their weekend to watch you make an idiot of yourself. You know, be nice to them. That's why uh, our buddy Kurt always cooks them dinner at, down at CMP. Yep. I'll throw in just a little added to this work. You may not be able to give up your entire weekend working a corner worker or doing a full corner worker shift, but help the organizers. If you're at the autocross, go in early and say, what can I do? You know, you're going to, you know, you're going to end up working a third or a half or whatever anyway. Do that part with joy because that's important to the sport. Offer to help, show up early, don't be a dick, be a dude, whatever you got to say. The people who run those motorsports events that you like deserve not only your appreciation, but a helping hand every now and then. Back to you, Mental. Keep going. All right. Christy makes fun of me for this one. Take good notes. I take notes constantly i always have notes written down i am always note, note, note to self next time i'm at a race notice that <laughs> mental is writing things down mental writes everything down and the reason i say this is under the theory of pedagogy the which is how you learn things the more muscles you involve in stuff you know 
mental, your, your, your arms, your eyeballs, everything on there, the more likely it is to be committed into the permanent part of your brain. So I do, I take notes everywhere. I take notes when Chris talks to me about lap times, when he says, don't do these things to the car, do these things to the car. Uh, I noticed in this corner, this pavement is giving away these things all matter and uh, take notes. The last thing, and then we'll move on to the next section uh, about um, read the rules. I am not a rule follower. I have never been a rule follower. I'm Says the military guy. man of how many years? Right? Right. right? But I've, I've built a career on being that guy that, but every time I skip reading the rules, I always regret it. And it was, uh, I believe, Smokey Eunuch who said something like, know the rules so you know how to cheat. <laughs> okay. We, I think usually cheating and racing is not the thing you should do. But but if I'm not breaking the rules, then I'm not really cheating, am I? I the rule book is a tool. People like to think of rules as limitations. Rules are tools. And if they... You know, usually it says, well, it doesn't say you can do it. You can't do it kind of a deal. And that's fine. But there are plenty of ways to exploit a, an advantage of how rules are written. And for a lot of people, that is a ton of fun. Okay. Most of them are called lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Facts. All right. Are we ready right, to so move on? We yeah. are. So cool. the, the last chunk of this from the article, it's, it's, it, literally just it's titled living which you know it's it's something that we're supposed to be getting out of this thing uh, there's a whole lot of buzzwords about quiet quitting quiet achieving quiet at firing whatever you want to do but we're all trying to just live our lives have fun and enjoy what it is we are supposed to be creating in this world and the first thing out there is get out and see the world and i think that all of my friends here and if you're listening to this podcast chances are you at are at least to a degree an adventurer. We all were a little jealous of our friend, Gentleman Dave, while we were all locked down during 2020. He was out driving everywhere and learning how to cook in a single pan and making these gourmet meals and just seeing the world out there. But if you bring it back to just motorsports, love racing. I love, I love driving more than I love watching, but I have learned a lot by watching. I've had a great time by watching and just going to an event and enjoying an event, autocross, drag racing, your local dirt track is always, always hilarious. Get out there and, and see some stuff. The, uh, the next point that they wrote in there, and this is the infamous quote from Bill and Ted, and they even acknowledge it, is be excellent to each other. We've said this before. These are your people. These aren't your enemies. This is your tribe. These are the people that are enabling you or helping you, or if you've got no one to compete against, you've got no one to beat. So at least, you know, show them the respect of someone else who enjoys the same things that you do. Don't be a dick, be a dude. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Came up again. Right. <laughs> yep. Where are you, Matt? You out there? Go That's on. Cause it's a good quote. Yeah. Good words to live by. I've got a couple that I, added to what they had is one is uh, say yes to adventures instead of finding excuses. Love that. If you can make it work, go on the adventure, try, try to find a way to make it work. Not as opposed to, well, I have this thing and then, and then, and then. just go. If no one gets hurt much, then it's a good story. <laughs> no matter what. And what? scars, scars are fun. Right. Sure. As long as, as long as they're not too big. Yeah. Chick stick scars. Pain is temporary. Get out there and do it. All these stories things. are forever, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's from a movie yeah. somewhere. I don't remember. Yeah. It's good. And the next thing is keep your project list realistic or it will own you. That's not mm. fun. So that's not a fun way to live. Mike Getting to work on the car versus having to work on the car. Yeah. 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 And there's always going to be times to have to, but when your project list is so long that you feel like you're doing nothing but working on things and it just becomes stressful, then it's not fun anymore. I feel so, like we've been there. I've totally been there. That's why like, oh, you keep saying, I want a Miata. And I say, no, I have too many things to maintain already. <laughs> I know. I know. 
Yes, uh-huh. but if you get a new Miata, you won't have to maintain it. You can scream, warranty! <laughs> and I just have to go to work more to pay for it. Oh, well. Okay. So, and and, and yeah. I'm going to come back to that thing when we talked about keeping clutter. Uh, I do love to see possibility in everything, but I, I fall down that rabbit hole and I end up with all these wonderful, well, when I'm done with this, it's going to be X. And if I ever got the time to do that, it'd be great. But when you try to do everything, you can't do anything. Not fun. Jeff, I like this. Cool. Take us home. Yeah, here, here's two, and, and I don't want to, Chrissy didn't select anything here, so okay. feel free to comment on nope. anything. Okay. But this this is a very short part of the article, so we've all, I guess, added our own. Um, I say find your community. And, you know, yeah, I'm the guy who builds communities at college and blah, blah, blah. But there's a drastically different vibe and feel with every different community. And what the vibe is in a lemons paddock is different than an AER paddock is different than a NASA paddock. Um, even spaces inside the NASA paddock, the H1, H2 guys in a NASA paddock are drastically different than the, you know, that's the Honda racers, which of course Chris bonds with all the time, drastically different than the guys who are trying to set fastest lap in, you know, in, in the different class. So, you need to find where you belong and if you're not vibing with the people who are there go somewhere else it's a big community even though it's a small community find what fits you and have a blast i would think even in a lemons paddock there's a difference you know absolutely you go over over Mm -hmm. there to the league of legitimate nigerian businessmen and they've got their own vibe and i love it I love swinging by there and hanging out with those guys for a little bit, but it's not necessarily for, for a, how I'm going to for a little it. bit. For a, but but I you know it's not how I'm going to spend my weekend. But for that crew, man, that that is what keeps them sane. How they do their Monday through Friday jobs. Yeah, when they start vacuuming the paddock with the vacuum they found, and they're like the gra- they're just like vacuuming the grass. It, it's time to go. It's like, <laughs> or you know, or it's like it, yeah, or it's, yeah. It's, it's it's time to watch. Yeah. So here, here's what well, we do it all the time. There's people out there with, uh, you know, p- putting cameras in everybody's face because they're making some kind of YouTube flip. Like, cool, man. Just do that over there. I'm going to be over here hanging out in the hot tub. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, find your community and stick with them and have a good time. But the other side of this discussion, the other side of the same coin is don't gatekeep. And for those of you who aren't in the nerd culture, gatekeeping is when you yuck somebody else's yum. When you say you don't belong in my community because, or you're not up to my standards because you're different, or you like something different than me, so you're less than me. F that crap. The the beginning of this show says it, I don't care what you do with your car, as long as you're hooning it and you're wrenching it and you're having a good time, even if I don't understand you over cambered fools in your civics. And, you know, I, I hung out with them and I did the low car limbo thing. And I said, I can't believe we're going to do limbo and low car limbo and what a good time I had. And just don't gatekeep, don't yuck other people's yum. If that's what they're doing, they love their slab. Let them have it. Don't kink shame, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. we're all weirdos. We know it. You know, if you're listening to this podcast, you go to work and people are like, why do you, why do you race? Uh, why do you know, your hands not clean? You got black fingernails. Why do you have stickers on your car? My answer always why is does your car sound like that. Everybody's got a hobby. Everybody's got a, a money suck. I could be golfing. I could be doing drugs. It's literally what I tell people uh, at, at work or whoever asks. Mm-hmm. Which in, in, in of those choices, take the drugs because golf is just. So God, golf is. Terrible. I mean, I could be racing, I could be golfing, or I could be doing yeah. drugs. Is what yeah. I what I get at. That's usually yeah. just our chosen Sorry, way to waste time and money with our friends. We, we, we have, have one. Yeah, we have our club fair that goes on, and it was literally today, and the equestrian team, and the ski team, ski club, both was like, Jeff, you have to come out and try our hobby. You will love it. And I said, 
that's great for y'all. <laughs> I oh and the um what's the frisbee game they play when they Rolf, ultimate frisbee no ultimate golf. Golf. Oh, oh, oh. ultimate, ultimate. I'm like awesome. I'm not I'm not running like that guys I'm yeah, no. great for y'all <laughs> I got a desk job I got an elliptical and that's as close as I get I'm you, frisbee you golf of, I'd be down do a with. lot of yeah no, yeah, no yeah. I would be probably when I was in my 20s I played a lot of ultimate frisbee and it was a hoot in before, my 20s I would run a lot too <laughs> before we Not, move on to our uh our next part the uh, Je- hello sweet but terrible I meant to do this at the beginning of the show uh last week before we recorded the show I received a delightful and thoughtful and caring gift from a close friend who expected absolutely nothing in return and I failed to acknowledge it and I can't let this go again so I have an awesome business card. Oh, it's true. true. That was sent to me from our good friend, Jeff. And these are slick because we've got QRR codes with our YouTube and our web page and everything. You put a lot of work into these, man. These are really cool. But well, luckily, I only, I only had to do it once and then I just changed the names. On it, so. <laughs> yeah. But I, I got this, I got this weird box. I'm like, what the hell did I Right. I said the same thing. I'm like, what's this? There's- What's this on the table? Mm-hmm. Now we got to talk to a lot of people that don't know who we are. So to give I, them away. Yeah. Silly yeah. me. Right. Forcing us to do things like that. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Good. All right. So any other topics on how to make car stuff fun before we close Just, it up? If you're not having fun, stop and reevaluate. Is this a temporary, just, all right, I'm in a lousy situation, but overall this is fun. Like, you know, when you're working on the car because the motor just fell out and there's axle grease everywhere and you got to clean up all the axle grease and it's like, well, this is no fun, but overall this is still fun. This is just a lousy moment. Or is this consuming your life or is this just, you're not having an enjoyment anymore. All right, well then do something else. Mm -hmm. Move along. Do something different. Identify what's making you miserable and see if you can pull back from it or change a new hobby. And I will throw this out. Listener, what did we miss? What is your advice that you use to keep this hobby fun and entertaining for you and your community? Let us know, drop it in the comments, send us uh, on one of our social medias, comment on one of our bizarre posts. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Does anyone have a just the tip, hello sweet, or just one goat? Tick, tick, no. tick. I've been trying to no. come up with some kind of safety thing that's interesting and new. And I'm like, my it's, answer is like, wear the PPE. That's my, uh, I'll give an update it's, on it's last winter. week's it's winter. I do. if you'd like. Yeah, please. Does anyone yes. remember what last week's? I still make weeks... fun of you. <laughs> what? I was just talking. What? Okay. Yes. Okay. So re- a quick refresher. Jeff did not apply his handbrake. Holy shit. Or leave his, it in gear. Didn't leave it in gear because I don't leave things in gear. And my start. car rolled out of the parking lot. And I said, I am going to retrain myself to start doing both. Um, and this all stems from my 1993 Eagle Talon so, TSI all wheel drive that would drive terribly. Vicky, shift terribly. Vicky, and I, Vicky and I went to dinner and I, I have this, you know, just. Your new Miata. Thing. Oh, right. No, and, you know, and as I like, literally, as I put my hand on the door handle, I tap the, the gear shift to make sure it's at first. I tap the handbrake to make sure it's up. And then I tap the gear shift again because I'm a weirdo. And Vicky kind of, she's like, do you do that every time? I'm like, funny, you should ask because Jeff's <laughs> car rolled out into traffic and my loving bride of 20 years went, that doesn't surprise me at all. No, nope, not even a little me. bit. <laughs> So the update from just the tip, Jeff has been attempting to leave it in gear and retrain himself. And it has not gone well, not because I haven't been leaving it in gear, but I have, it's the startup now that I have a problem because I clutch in, I push the start button and I pull my foot off the clutch because that's what I have taught myself over here. So now I have like literally like puppy effed the car in first gear at like half the times that I've started it. Um, I don't know what's more embarrassing. One time in like 40 years, my car rolls away. 
or oh. six times in a week the fact that I start the car and then immediately it, jump, it lurches forward two feet. Are you at least backing into your stall at work or? It doesn't go that far. I mean, you know, it's just, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> I, I would say in the week it's been four or five times. It's a, that's a lot. Two or three of them violently. Two or three of them. Oops, I forgot. I'm in gear. I don't. Okay, so here's the question around the horn. Would you call that a success because I've been leaving it in gear or a failure because I'm forgetting to take it out of gear? Oh, totally success. <laughs> Your initial goal was I need to retrain myself, which you have effectively done. Now, now, he, now he's, just st two. he's sticking his finger in the, in, in the uh, electric fence. Oh, wow. Oh, oh that's wrong. Oh, uh -oh, this uh -oh. Is, uh, the, the fence is right there. Oh. And, and let, let me remind the folks that I have not daily driven an automatic car except for a short period when I owned a truck from the time I was like 17 to 19 it, for 50 years. Um, You've driven 17. To, well, you daily drove the Corvette and the truck for a while when things have been. Broken yeah, and, briefly, I guess. Yeah. All right. I use there the parking brake and masculine. Like, regularly. Right? Well, we live on a hill. That doesn't yeah. help. Yeah. The hill that yeah. Jeff's car rolled, rolled into down. my <laughs> car. I should also mention that this is New Jersey. It is flat as F. Yeah. So. So yeah. what the fact that it rolled down the hill is it probably not down the, a hill. Literally just like into oh, the, that's probably the first time that it rolled away. It probably oh. could have rolled away other times is because you live in a place that is flat that you didn't has experience. No has no mm -hmm. hills, yeah. You're terrifying. <laughs> Let's talk about the next show. Mental. What are we doing next week? Listeners, we will be a day late <gasps> for that. We apologize. Oh my uh, gosh. Bill is going to be so your, upset. I know. No, we appreciate your loyalty. Well, and that's why I'm saying it now so my phone doesn't go off at three uh -huh. in the morning. Pretty the episode much. isn't up. Yep. It's broken. <laughs> we know. Where is it? <laughs> but uh, we appreciate your loyalty to this one. This show is going to be worth the wait because we are having Andy Diderosi the chairman of the Detroit bus company. They do, aside from just being a cool tour company, they actually do a lot of great community things. They're helping make Detroit better. He is a lifelong Detroit person. He is the guy that organized the protest for uh, at the GM Ren Center to bring back Saturn as part of a lemons rally. And then he has the Detroit student racing team, which he's gotten high school students involved in motorsports. If you've met him at the track, you understand he is just a positive force for good and a wonderful human being. And we love, we love that he exists. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy this interview. Yeah. I follow his TikTok and watch him get mad that people are like stealing cars and leaving them in front of his factory in Detroit. He also had, they, 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 uh, they just had to say goodbye to their, their, their shop cat. They've done some great oh. stuff. They're great people. Okay. My speakers, my speakers not working for some reason. It Hop is. On, so it we can terrible. hear it. We can actually. Well, hear it's it. like coming out of my phone and not out of the speaker. Look, I'll just do it without checking. Check, check, it, check oh, wow. the box. Check wow. the box, folks. Oh, that now it. It just oh, blinked. It's all broken now. Uh -huh. It's all broken now. Anyway, thank Earl you for downloading Jenker. us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoy this podcast, subscribe, caress the like and follow button, whatever it takes. Uh, Give us a good review on whatever you watch, listen to us on. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers. Email us, everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can still text Mental and ask him about the 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 tire in the passenger seat or whatever. 484-243-0455. Find us on Instagram or Twitter, everyone.racers. YouTube, face. it's all over the place. Thanks again, and until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless everything is shiny because you've listened to our podcast and you're having so much fun with all of your cars and you cleaned the bottom, just like Chris told you before you wrenched on it. 
then just keep those wheels down.